From here on out, friends, I take no responsibility for this show. I advise you all to tune to Craft Theater on NBC. They've got a lovely show over there. <laughs> I say that because I literally don't know what's going to be on the rest of this show. They would not let me rehearse anything or meet anybody but the first contestant. I get all of my instructions from these cards, and I've just run out of my last card, so bye. Well, uh, Gary, excuse yes, me, but as it just happens, uh, you don't have to do anything else for the rest of the show. Sure. Because, you see, as you know, this is the last I've Got a Secret show for 1956. Yes. Isn't that right, Henry? Yes, uh, that's uh, right. I think uh, we all uh, we agree it's the last of the year. But um, it's been a pretty uh, interesting year, hasn't it, Gar? I mean, um, well, we've had our laughs. <laughs> we've had our tears. Mm, but we've come smiling through, haven't we, Gar? Have we, Jane? Up until yes, now. And, Gary, I have a wonderful secret for you. I've got a secret. This program has been elected the number chosen, one... Chosen, chosen, chosen. chosen as yeah, the chosen. number one panel and quiz show by the Look Magazine Awards for 1956. And that was voted on by 1,500 television critics and editors all over the country. All right. All right. This Sunday night, Gary, you have to go over to the Ed Sullivan Show on CBS <laughs> and receive the award. And the Ed Sullivan Show, incidentally, is opposite the very wonderful Steve Allen Show on NBC. <laughs> I'll carry a portable set on stage and watch it. While you it's <laughs> Isn't that wonderful about the award, Bill? Oh, Jane, it is. And <laughs> it is. Gary, this, this has been a tender year. It's been a year which has enriched the lives of us panelists. And it's been a year when, because of you, I received 275,000 pieces of junk. <laughs> and by the way, Gar, I'd just like to say now on, on your time, thanks, it's just what I've wanted. In fact, it's been a, year's when, a year when a lot of things have happened to us panelists, uh, uh, but now we have reached the witching hour, Gary. The last minutes of the last <laughs> I've Got a Secret show of 1956, and now I'd like to present tonight's guest star. What will I do now? <laughs> well, we're going to get going now. Tonight, Gary, for the rest of the show, we're going to have the secrets, and you're going to have to find out what they are. Jolly. And the first person to get revenge is me. And boy, I think I deserve it. Gary Moore, do you remember this date? November 14th, 1956. Gary, on November 14th, you and Robert Young dismantled my entire dining room and brought all the furniture onto this stage and displayed it for the world to see and my couch needed recovering. I've never forgiven that. Denise Lohr, I'd like to ask you, as an impartial observer, what do you think of a thing like that? <laughs> you see? And now at last, sweet revenge. I have a secret, Gary, and I'm going to whisper it to the audience. Wish I were dead. <laughs> Whatever it is, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> All prize money uh, tonight from now on, this moment in the show, will go to the Hungarian Emergency Relief Fund in care of the Red Cross. Yeah. Now, Gary, we're going to treat you fairly, as fairly as you treated us in 1956. Yeah. Fair enough. My secret concerns something I've done, and we'll start the questioning with, um, with uh, Gary Moore. And the first one you can question is uh, Miss Denise Law. Denise. Uh, oh, come on! <laughs> All right, Gary, you see, that's just the way you do us. <laughs> I, I won't play that way. Come right here, face up. That's it. Face yeah. out front. Right about here, yeah. Yeah. And don't turn your head. You know what's good for you. Now, Gary, oh, me. watch me do the curtain. Right here. <laughs> Not you. The Mayfair Transit Company has moved your entire office, including your beautiful secretary, 
Joan Madeo, right here on the stage. There's Joan, all ready to take notes. Can I look? You may look now. Joanie! Oh, <laughs> and wait a minute. And here are four of your six writers on your daytime show, working as hard as they always do. Oh! <laughs> A funny thing happened to your office on the way to the theater. We <laughs> Get out of here. Bye. Bye, Joni. As usual, Gary, we're going to have you tell a few things about your office, but as you do to all of us, you have exactly 20 seconds into which to say there's a picture of Schweitzer, picture of the Red Wing, your original boat. Bust of Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Looking. The clown your wife gave you. Telephone. Telephone. Ashtrays. Ashtrays. Um, the big office. Oh, show two, the dog. Two ashtrays. Oh, show, show the dog. dog. This is my watchdog. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, they stole it this afternoon when he was out of the office. Gary, sure. that's all. Now, I just want you to get right out of here, right this minute. Now, wait a minute, Gary. One thing I wanted to tell you. The I got a very nice Christmas present yesterday. A personal one. You know, I'm opening in my play, Protective Custody, Friday at the Ambassador Theater, and I found out only yesterday from my producer, Anderson Lawler, that one of the investors, or some of the investors, backing my play are you and Bill and Jane and Henry and all the crew and all the stage sure. hands, and I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. Now, get out of here, will you? Yeah, get out of here where? What? I'm very grateful. Just get out. Bye. That's all. Get out. I must not say Mayfair Transit Company. I must say Mayflower Transit Company. I must, I must, I must, because it's Mayflower. Mayflower Transit Company. Forgive me, please. Mayflower. Ooh. While Gary's off stage, the next Avenger is Mr. Bill Cullen. Bill? Mm, well, on May you 20... go. Huh? Go. On May 23rd, 1956, we on the panel were embarrassed beyond the call of duty. Don McNeil was replacing Gary. And on Gary's instruction, he and Cesar Romero, while we were off stage, auctioned off something belonging to each of us. Now, I know that's hard for you folks to believe. <laughs> but we're going to do the same thing to him right now. And the money taken will go to the Hungarian Relief Fund. Now, everybody in the audience, have the cash ready. If you all have some cash ready, how much will be determined in a moment? We're going to auction off the suit that Gary Moore is wearing here tonight. We guarantee, <laughs> we guarantee to deliver it before you leave the theater, right on stage. Now, uh, any uh, bidder in the audience, will someone just raise their hand if they're willing to start for the coat and pants that Gary's wearing for a dollar? The lady down there in the white hat, a dollar, the lady says. Let me see if we can get that up to five dollars. Gentleman back there with the iron gray hair raising his five fingers. All right, sir. Uh, did I hear something from the balcony? Two cents. Back to five dollars. <laughs> Will anyone make this ten? Up there. Who says fifteen? Right there in the gray suit. The man in the gray suit says fifteen with a, holding Ooh, the two fingers. Boy. Fifteen dollars. Do I hear from the first floor here? Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars on the first floor. The gentleman back there again with a, holding up two fingers. Do I hear twenty-five dollars? Do I hear $100? <laughs> Back to $25. 45 does, does that lady in the leopard, uh, the, uh, the leopard hat, or the... Oh, no, it's a leopard in the lady hat. Uh, <laughs> do you make it $25, madam? Madam, do you make it $25? Thank you very much. It's a lady, yes. Uh, may we have 30 because this lady's losing her security here. Uh, 30? All right, I'll tell you. Where's the 30? Uh, do I have 30 down here on the first floor? All right, the lady in the leopard hat... Sold to that lady right there. Would you come up on stage, please, madam? The lady there who's saying, who me? Yes, will you come up and would you bring Gary back in, please? Would you let Gary back in? There's the lady. You come right on up stage. Bring your money with you, please, ma'am. $25 of it. Oh, boy. Gary. <laughs> Gary. Here he comes. Gary, would you stand right there? I, I know you've been out in the soundproof hall where we always stand. Gary Moore, uh, would you go over and sit by Faye, please, Gary? I'm sorry. Go over and sit by Faye. That lady you'll meet later on, Gary. Do you remember, do you remember, Gary Moore, this date? May 23rd, 1953. On that day, Gary Moore, you were on vacation. But Don McNeil, acting in your behalf, did a terrible thing to us. Denise, Denise, what do you think of a person like that? <laughs> Thank you, Denise. Well, now, we've done it to you, Gary. You may start the questioning with me. <clears throat> Oh, is this the night that Don McNeil, uh, the first night that I was away while I was on vacation? This isn't the one where he buried you in sand. Would you rephrase that, Gary? 
It's a little ambiguous there. Uh, one one oh. night while I was away, Don McNeil, that nasty man, did something I would never we have buried done. Him. He buried the panel in sand, or they buried him in sand. That's it. We buried him in sand, and Gary, you're right, it wasn't that night. It <laughs> wasn't that night at all. That's right. Oh, is time up? You mean again? No, I'm... Gary has to keep questioning. Oh, Gary, you must keep questioning. Yes. No, he's he lost. No, he's lost through. because time is up. Bill, all right, will you give him? All right, I sure will. All right, madam, uh, this lady back here. Gary, the secret is, while you were off stage, we auctioned something off. Uh, madam, uh, how much did you bid, please, ma'am? Uh, $25, $25, I believe it was. $25, you bid. And what is your name, please, ma'am? What is your Mrs. name? Mrs. Grenrod. Mrs. Yeah, Grenrod. And what did you buy, ma'am? Would you tell Gary what you bought? I bought your suit, Gary. Your suit. <laughs> May we bring down the dressing room, please? Gary, would you come over here? <laughs> I heard about this. All right, Gary. Well, up a little bit, up a little bit. Now, Gary, if you'll just disrobe, uh, I'll collect the money. Uh, may I have the money, please, madam? Because this, thank you very much. And isn't right this here. a barrel of fun? There's my... Uh, That's you stand the whole out, out, out. <laughs> Now, Gary, go on. The whole thing? Yes. Gary, don't worry. Gary, <laughs> Gary, don't worry about this because what? <laughs> Gary, I went over to your tailors, DeAndrea Brothers, is that right, in Rockefeller Plaza? DeAndrea Brothers, yes. And they're going to make a brand new suit for me. <laughs> it depends, all right. Got all my money in it. Well, all right. Oh, uh, Gary, actually, there's nothing to be upset about. <laughs> We have uh, some very worthwhile substitutes here. Would you mind putting those on, Gare? There's nothing to think about, old boy. <laughs> It'll work out all right. Sure, it will. Um, Gare, you did something to me one time. Just I didn't. a minute, Henry. I think we should say thanks to this nice That's lady. Right. Why, certainly. Thank, thank, you, you, nice lady. thank you, nice thank lady. Thank you, nice lady. Bye. Thank you. Let's give her a... <laughs> I'd love to know what she's going to do with that suit. Um, Next of our Purple Avengers is Henry Morgan. Henry? Uh, thanks, Faye. I'm glad it's my turn because, um, although I have nothing... Because <laughs> you've been here. You've been I have nothing against minutes. Gary, of course. <laughs> um, Gary, I wonder if you remember this date. November 28th, 1936. No. November 28th means nothing to you, does nothing. it? Nothing. I see. Well, it was an important date to me, Garrison. Uh, it seems that that was the day that you sent me to the Metropolitan Opera Company to be on stage, and uh, I was pretty much embarrassed, Gare. I didn't mind. <laughs> I didn't mind, Gare, when you sent me to Africa. That was all right. But the opera was embarrassing. I mean, really, it was. I didn't know a word of the music. Denise, do you think that was a nice thing to do? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, I'm going to tell the folks at home what it is that you um, um, have to guess, what I have planned for you, and uh, then um, we'll tell you. Uh, uh, where are they playing guys and dolls? <laughs> Now, uh, Garrett, you can question the panel very rapidly and you can start your questioning with me. It's some place I'm going to send you and something you have to do. You're sending me to appear in Guys and Dolls, but I don't know where it's playing. Uh, would you mind putting that in the form of a question? <laughs> Are you sending me to play in Guys and Dolls? No. No, that's interesting. You can continue your questioning with me. Well, you're not sending me out on a date with Bishop Sheen, that's for sure. <laughs> Would you like to question someone you might trust a little more? For example, would you like to ask um, Bill anything? No, I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. Uh, perhaps uh, you're getting sick and nervous and you'd like to know really where you're going? Yes, where am I going? Sure. Yes. Would you mind letting down uh, the uh, information here, please? Um, Gary. Oh, hey. <laughs> you are going to Birdland. Birdland, like for this? out of towners like that, you're dressed for it, is sort of the nerve center for jazz music in the United States. It's a basement. He sent me to the Met. He's going down <laughs> there. But the great Count Basie's appearing tonight, and so are you. You're leaving right after the show, and you're going to play drums till closing. And maybe through the rest of the week. And we're all going to go too. And we're all going with you. Congratulations. Well, I'll love that, boy. I'll love that. I really will. Come here, boy. And now, 
Birdland. Now, here's the last of our Purple Avengers, Miss Jane Meadows. Yes, Jane. and before you go to Birdland, I have my secret. And my secret needs you to put these blindfolds on, if you will, please. All in place? All in place. Okay, okay. boys. <laughs> now, Gary, do you remember this date? February 29, 1956. Now, on that date, Gary, you and Basil Rathburn did the creepiest things to all of us that has ever been done to such sweet people. Denise, what do you think of anybody who would do something creepy to all of us lovely people on the panel? Whatever this is, I'm enjoying it. Well, we're going to do it to you now, Gary. And, Faye, would you keep Gary right there while I whisper to the audience at home what the secret is? Basil Rathbone? Yeah, over here, Gary. Uh, step up. I remember. Yeah, step and up. now, Gary, it concerns something that we're going to do to you. I remember that. And you can start the questioning with me. <laughs> well, obviously, you've got me in some kind of a crate here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Obviously, believe. right. Go on and cut it off. Can I take this off? You yeah. can take it off now and see where you are. Sure, you can take it off. Bye. Hey, bye. bye. <laughs> Birdland, anyone? Bye, bye Gary. Birdland, anyone? Good night, friends. show just like Zip comes to yours. Bye. Bye, Gary. Take it easy. Watch it, Gary. All right, bring it back. You're so helpful. I, well, goodbye, friends. This may be my farewell appearance. I'll see you some other time. in a closed car. I didn't do this to I may have children at Birdland tonight. You know that? My older boy might be at Birdland tonight. I go walking in there and then... Bye, darling. Bye, baby. Thank you, darling. See you at the opening. seat of the truck. That's the Mayflower Transit Company. Travel arrangements for I've Got a Secret are made through United Airlines. United Airlines flies our contestants in fast new DC-7 mainliners.
This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Tadman production. We want to thank Kate Lord Traces Company for moving the contents of Gary's office to our stage. Music tonight was by the Norman Paris Creole. This is John Cannon speaking.